Well, it's working to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, guys. I got the jobs done. They're all out of the way. I'm here at Finch Farm Fishery. I've got an afternoon. It's half past one. I'm going to try and catch a catfish. I'm trying, hopefully, not to get sidetracked by anything else. And at the moment, at the present time, there's been a lot of people fishing. He said, I haven't even been here uh, for some time because I knew there's a lot of fishery. Fisheries are full and it's been uh, full. So I thought it's been hammered. But the tip off from the bailiff is the catfish seem to come out. It's turned this way with the wind. They seem to come out when it's a little bit quieter, less anglers about. They've got over there their uh, blower going, their aeration water sprayer. And they were telling me they topped all the water levels up. So I've seen one fish just move there. I think it's time, guys, with thunderstorms forecast. And you know the luck of the totally awesome people. Me, yes, there's a good chance it's going to get wet. Raining now. Let's get the gear set up. Let's get this line threaded up. This is Mike's carp gear. I don't really own any carp gear, I just borrow Mike's all the time. Little point. And the other thing I like about carp rods, look, look at the size of that ring. <laughs> Somebody my age, I can actually thread the line through the rings on these. With my match rod, you need one of those brain surgeon magnifying glasses. The butt ring on the on the match was not even the size of the tip ring on a carp rod. So look at that, straight through. The rig I'm going to tie on is here. This is my uh, sports bag come tackle. I've got some of these guys, look. Mini blueies which I caught on before. No idea whether we're going to catch them or not. Who knows, let's get some of this junk out. Uh, let's have a look, let's see what we got. It's that one I think. I think it's this one. Got a rig medic. Now, hook. This is what I'm using. An Eagle Claw Gold Eye L195. It's a regular size 4 there. See, it's called a Gold Eye. It's a salmon hook that we use over in British Columbia for big salmon. Spring salmon, you know, 20, 40 pounds. Chum salmon, double figures. Pinks, humpback, where you want to get. Cohos. I'd like to get back. I've been there for a few years. Fantastic fishing in British Columbia. Nearly as fantastic as Finch Farm on its day. Now, let's pull that knot down. That's good. A bit more spit. Now, there are some clonkers in here. Put all your ends in, of your rubbish in here. And guys, listen, just take your rubbish home. They were telling me earlier on, look, 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 I mean, it's just, do you know, now I've got to take it home. It's easy, brought it with you, take it back. It's no hardship. What I don't understand is, and well, I'm not having a rant, well, I am, but I think it's only, only right and proper, is that you bring your food in a plastic bag, generally, don't you, when you go to the supermarket? Well, why not use the same plastic bag and just, you know, put it back? Just put it back in the bag and take it home and put it in the bin. I'm just going to use this double SSG. I think that's too heavy. I want to keep it light. Now, treble A is the one I generally use here. I'll put it quite close. There's the hook. There. Now, I'm just going to pinch that on a little bit. So I don't want it sliding. Told you about the rain, didn't I? I did mention, as soon as Graham's here, bring it on. Right. So, one rod is ready rigged. Just need to get that bait in the water. The other thing I hate, other than shocking floats, get my tackle wet, is putting in a rod rest. I'm going to use this, I think, as my backrest. I've done this before, to be honest, guys. If you guys got a carp barren, you're just on a short session. 
you can get the front rest in, the back rest, you can use use the trolley as the back rest and just put the front one in. I know in Mike's gear, I haven't used it for years, they're probably going to be out of battery. Got to find out how they work. Sort of mix and match of buzzers here, boys. There you go, guys. Look, see what I mean. Perfect backrest, no hammering, no banging, because he said keep it quiet, and yes, more litter. Um, I've got bluey. I've also got in here. Let's have a little poke around and let's see what we've got. got. Obviously, sandwiches are going to stay a little bit into the evening. Mike gave me these. Butcher's choice dog food. His dog doesn't like it. Beef, carrot, chicken, and potatoes. Puppy Junior with vegetables and rice. Well, they can be queued up anyway. But I might try a piece of this. Depending. If I can get it open. Oh yes. This one. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh, oh, whoopsie. Wow. That smells a bit funky. It's about three years out of date. I'm sure the old the old catfish won't mind. We use quite a good bit. I think it's gonna be very soft this one. Let's have a look at it. Luncheon meat is good. A uh, catfish can go, I don't know, I want to say five to eight pounds. They get double figures in here. It's very, very soft. But it can go in as loose feed anyway. And I've got a feeling it might pick up the smaller catfish. I only want to catch, look, I just want to catch a catfish to be honest, people. It'd be just nice to catch one. Now I need a piece of grass, baiting needle. I'm in a mess because I haven't fished for a while like this. Well, for a year. So all I'm going to be using, just a piece of this straw, folded up, I tie a half hitch here, or sliding loop, sliding loop knot I suppose would be, would have stopped knot. This is like using a plastic bait stop, but obviously with a soft bait, the cart plastic stops are going to pull straight through. Then I get myself a gob of meat. Push my baiting needle through. All for beginners. Can you see this? Pull it out like that. There we go. There's the loop. There's the stop. And it's going to hang like that. And then I just tie this straight onto the bend of the hook. So it's a hair rig. It'd be nice to get a catfish, be my first one of the year. If I get one, you want it about there. So I go around twice and I go around here, just tie a loop on, go around twice, overhand knots, as easy as you could want. Right, lots of scissors again. Gosh, I'm going to have to bite this one. There's the bait. You've got that just hanging there. One shot just to hold it in position. Scrap an island goes in there. These have already got bobbins on them. So I have seen a few bubbles coming up there. So we can only cast out and give it a go. Now, I think I'm going to go one two three i'm not going to go too far away from this corner here guys just there let that sink sink the line it's not very deep close the bail check the drag so tightening up tighten up i want to sink the line but without bumping the bait into any weed i can just feel the tension there's my drag it's tight Okay, just 
set it down slowly. Now, you've got my bait runner there. You have to check the tension on the back of the bait runner. How tight do you want it? Now, I will generally fish with a bail closed like this and straight locked on. I don't generally fish. I'm going to put that back a bit. I don't generally fish anything except straight lock up. You can have a sort it out here. Is that working? Somebody tell me. Now, these blueies are really oily. Look, there they are. They're like a sort of silver garfish, really. Beach guys are starting to use these. Well, they have used them for a long time. Freshwater guys, I don't know. Catfish guys know about them. Piking, I don't honestly know, in fairness, whether they are popular as a pike bait. Of course I can catch pike on that. Of course I would do. Silver like this, pointed nose. That actually looks very, very much like a miniature wahoo. Just there. So I've no idea which country they come from, but they are a good bait. I'm going to use a middle section, like this. Because basically, that's what I've caught on before. Keep the rest in there. And all I'm going to do is just... So I don't know, to be honest, whether it's going to pick it up at one end or the other. Just once through the middle like that. And this one, oh, first little touch. That was probably just what I call an adjustment on the paddle on the beach, just a bit of tension there. I've seen quite a few bubbles there. Who knows, the carp, bream, perch, a lot of fish can make bubbles, catfish included. And I'm gonna go just off of that corner of the rushes. Out we go, perfecto. I'm gonna sink the line slightly this side. <clears throat> I did see one fish cruising under there. I think it was a small carp, probably five, six pounds. I must not get sidetracked. Check my drag. A load of bubbles coming up down there. Goodness me. Back we go. Now this is a sort of hit and hop. Oh God. This is a sort of hidden. It's a sh shut up. What I'm going to do, because I'm getting beeps, is put a piece of cloth on this metal, which will stop. Shut up. Piece of cloth there that stops it sliding. This, unfortunately, going to twist. <laughs> look, the flies are coming around this already. So, look. I just chuck a few bits of freebie samples. I'm sure they're going to get get munched up by the uh, small fish. I've actually got a hand wipe rag. I could be bouldering on the organised. So just to mix up a bit, I'm going to put a front half of bluey. I like the middle bit, I like this bit, but I'm going to keep that as a spare. Keep it in the shade. These three bits can go out as loose feed. Sometimes I'm, I'm just happy that you see the head and the eye, but I have to say the most takes I've had have been on a midsection. Everybody's different. And this one I am going to lob out near that bubbler. I don't want to go too close because I might get snagged up there. So let's just. That's too close. That's too close, Graham. I mean, this is only a small pool. But I can assure you there are some clunkers in here. Some really big old fish. Just throw a few loose samples out there. Ooh. They can come across, hopefully, and I am, as they say, pretty well set up. One thing I've got to do, and that, is I generally, when I'm fishing, like to wet my net first. And this is a bit superstitious, but I like to dip the yolk on it 
I know it dries out in the sun, it's just a little superstitious thing. And then I flip it up like this, so it's not tangled. And it's there where I want it. One hopes. Well, all looks pretty good, all looks pretty cool. Time for lunch, I feel. Now, what I must do, because I'm now sitting here, adjust the chair. That's it, so I can actually get to those rods, because I'm gonna go like this, I'm gonna go right, one, set these two up, two, three, that's on straight strike drag. And when that goes off, if it goes off, I'm just gonna pick straight up and go into the fish. You guys probably won't see it happen to camera, I'll probably just say, I'm on a fish, because I'm not letting the camera run for days. Catfishing is very much take it or leave it. It's a fish or nothing. I don't see anything else moving there, but I have seen quite a few bubbles, so at 10 past two, let's see what happens by about five-ish this evening. Well, nothing as yet, guys. Both on the uh, sections of bluey over there. One sort of beep on that rod. Could have been anything. Could be a, a fish bumping into the line, what we actually call a liner. Uh, but I've been having some bites on that small stuff, which I've now found is very, very, very soft. That one barely stays on the hook. They're definitely nibbling away at it. So I've now changed over. Well, I haven't changed over. I've run out the other one. I've now got this chunk on which is much firmer and this one is, let's have a look at this, for the uh, entrepreneurs of the fishing world, the gourmets of the bait, bait world. It's got composition, chicken, this down for you, chicken, <coughs> lamb, <coughs> rice, vegetables, dried egg, natural ground bone, oh, that's like my feet, seaweed meal, oh, seaweed meal, that can't be bad, I mean, you know, it's called, for, it's for puppies, if you could feed a dog on seaweed, why am I wasting money when I have my dog on all the, all the different foods, I could take him down at low tide and get him to eat all the kelp, he'd love it, right, now we go with this one. And I've dropped some of the other stuff just down in the margins here. I've never margin fished here, I've got to be perfectly honest. Never have, but we're just going to love that. It's a much firmer piece out there, meat. Is the most god awful black cloud you could want to see. They have said there's going to be some storms. I can't even feel which way the air is going. I think it's sort of coming this way, so it might have my name on it over there. But I did bring my giant umbrella just in case. Well, I just heard the most gargantuous, explosive, what they call sucking take. There's an explosion on the surface. It's no question in my mind it's a big catfish. It's crept up on a fish near the edge of the rushes, right in the rushes. I saw the rushes shake and everything. Bosh! Um, so I've gone over there and I could see a huge big swirl. And from that swirl, there's bubbles going along. Now I've seen that a catfish come up before on another fishery, come up roll, and I watched where it went down head first. And it went down, took something, and there were these bubbles and they were moving. 
so obviously I can't wind in and drop one in front of those bubbles so I feel I would have got a tape but some people here have told me you can get them float fishing so I'm just wondering with that third rod I've got bluey I hear bluey there and that um, doggy breakfast cereal thing on the right I wonder should I just put a float on and just let it drift along with who knows maybe a whole bluey I don't know hmm what to do it's quarter past three so it's getting sort of late afternoon and I purposely fancied my chances with this sort of muggy stormy weather that they're giving thought uh, that might be you know catfish time but that's a good indication that one that moved so maybe they are starting to move I think I'm going to give it till perhaps four and then I'm going to see a digger float out and see if I've got a, a controller float or something I can just uh, plumb the depth and fish it just off the bottom and let it drift around maybe maybe cast it slowly retrieve it you know dragging it past the edges of the rushes like that I don't know but obviously I've learned something there I learned something if this rain cloud comes over this way I learned it's wet well thankfully the storm has passed me by it's gone way over there drifted all the way A beautiful evening now that's what I want to see that lovely blue sky coming over I just got the whole lake to myself, which is nice. No fish, I've missed one catfish. Struck on the bluey, didn't feel a thing. I've not had a take since then. I've heard another big uh, crash in the lilies, which 100% is a catfish taking, you know, fish. Lots of bubbling going on, and I've been using, somebody told me try float fishing and suspending a piece of uh, fish bait off the bottom. So I've been casting out and just retrieving it slowly. Uh, just here, I've got it. I've got it in the margins now, just there, you see. self in float, so the bait sinks slowly. I've been doing all this, nothing at all. So I think I'm going to change this one over. I've cubed up some of this meat, some of this stuff, which I'm not really using. So I've cubed some of that up. I've got no hook baits, didn't bring any maggots. I've got to catch something and save the blank. I've got to bait up just down here because I have had bubbles just here. It's going to be bottom end only. I only want a small float and just see if I can't catch something. Look, I've got, still got my couple of cat rods out, but you know me guys, I get bored really quickly. Let's give it a go. Well, there's still a few bubbles coming up down there. I'll talk to the bait and you see he thinks they might be bream as well and I've got a feeling that's what I think they might be. Probably skimmer bream. Hook length, I'm going to show you. It's worth looking at people. It's called Lions, the Fisherman's Pride. And there's a name for the pass. Dick Clegg, hooks to nylon. Graham is still using these. <laughs> Bronze falls reversed. I've got bar crush barbs on those. And there's a picture of the man himself, Dick Clegg. So he was a well-known matchman. I don't do match fishing, no, it doesn't interest me. But he was a well-known matchman, I know the name. I guess he's, I don't even know if he's still with us. Is he, is he still with us? Somebody tell me, I don't know. This packet, I don't imagine was tied by Dick, but these are Dick Clegg's design, I guess. So Dick, <laughs> why am I not catching any fish on these? They were given to me as a collector's item. Um, I'm using them. While I'm waiting for the catfish, I'm slicing up this meat here into these little cubes. And I talked to the uh, bailiff here just now, and he said he does a bit of fishing in the evenings, and he's been catching in the other lake, the one called Anaconda, and little bits of cubes of meat. So that's all I've got, because I've got no hook bait, no maggots, no worms, no nothing, no ground bait. All I can do is cut a piece of this up, just keep throwing it in like that. I've plumbed the depth. I think I'm a little bit shallow. I've left it a bit shy, because I thought it'd be off the bottom and they'll see it, but meat sinks quite far, so I want to make sure I extend that a bit and make sure I'm absolutely on the bottom. For the catfish, Zippo. Nice swirl out there. Beautiful evening though, guys. Beautiful evening just to be out. We get to the stage where I need a fish. There we go, that's what I've got. Now what I've done is I've put, let me show you. Just to take that down a little bit quicker, I've put on a number eight, I think it is. Yeah, number eight shot. Just there, just there. About four or five inches from the little piece of uh, lamb, kidney and seaweed hook bait. And I'm just gonna lower it down. Let's see if we can't just see what these bubbles are. Oh, there's a big ripple there. You know, the float won't even cock. Oh, there we go. 
Perhaps some ground bait we're doing, just a little cloud bait or something like that. Oh, I saw a little twitch then. There we go, there we go. Oh, something bumped it, could be a line bite. Just watch the float there, I'll keep as still as I can with the head cam. He's trying to get hold of it. Look, they could be tiny fish like this, they could be absolutely tiny. Wouldn't surprise me if they were. A little two or three inch roach or something like that, or rud. Just going to move it back a tad. Oh, oh, oh. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. See what they are, please. Don't let's lose it. Let's, oh, <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, look, this is what the catfish is. That's a nice little bream. Dare I swing it on Dick Clegg's line? Oh, my God. Result. There we go, by changing and changing and thinking. Nothing on a catfish, and there we go. Hold still. Save the blank. Cover me in slime. Back he goes. Yuck. Well, boys, I'm really pleased with that, because that all I'm using is that dog food Mike gave me. Now, I could have done this all day and presumably work the swim up, but I might come back tomorrow and have another go. If I get another two or three fish, I might do the same thing tomorrow, because I can work away here, leave the cat baits out, yes. Now, the downside is, talking to the baby, he said, we only switched the blow on today. Ah, oh, great, maybe that's why the cats aren't biting. That's upset them. They'll get used to it, of course they will, but I've got a feeling that's what's queered me up because I've not had one decent pull other than that early drawers one. Right, what a good job I had this meat and I had the foresight just to cube it up and throw it in that margin. Look how close I'm fishing, ridiculous. But plumb the depth so you get the float set right. Now you can imagine bream that size, that's the width I'm cutting the meat, like that. And I'm just going to cut it in one big length. That size bream is one mouthful for a catfish, I can tell you that now. They've got cats in there running from about five pounds, I suppose I've seen the smallest I've seen, five pounds into double figures. Then there's a gap, say, so, you know, ten pounders, tens to eighteen, I want to say. Then there's a bit of a gap, then there's jumbos, and they are jumbos, they are. 30 pluses and they are difficult to get out in respect of its hit and hold tactics. So I say on this reel down here I've got a 20 pound line. I'll be very interested if I can just finish the evening off and get a few more fish. Catfish will be a bonus. Just keep plinking away on the inside bits of meat going down. And I can't actually push, come here, I can't actually push the, um, it's on a cart rod by the way. This is how I've always been fishing like this, adapting. You've just got to push that hook into the meat and lower it. You couldn't possibly cast it, it's going to come off. Just swing it out and lower it basically. And I think why I got that fish, to be honest, is you saw me put that number eight shot about six inches from the hook. That's just enough to pull that tight between the float and the bait. And it puts it more, if it stretches it all out nice and tight. And hopefully, I'm going to get, I'm going to come back on the drag on here a bit in case there is a decent fish down there. <clears throat> Look, this is a 12 foot carp rod. Half the rod's in the bank. There's only the top section, there's not even the top section is where I'm fishing. You can see the float is, so I'm fishing five feet away from the edge of the bank. Just going to move that in a little bit.
Oh, better fish, boys. Got to be a bream, definitely. Might even be a netter. Oh, it doesn't look it, but I'm on that light hook link. Haven't seen a fish yet. Swirling, might be a small carp. Might be a small carp. I don't think the bream generally swirl like that, so I've got to put my money on being a small carp, the way it's digging like this. I can't put any more of a bend in the carp, well, unfortunately, because I, I just popped the fish off with this drag setting on this. Oh, nice bream. Oh, that's a good one. Hang on, that's a turn up of the books, if I get it. Oh, God. What's happening? What's happening here? He's gone through the old line, wet my net so it's sunk. It's a nice bream. Don't go, tell, please don't tangle over that. Too late, he's pulled the cat, cat line out. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He's lost in that net. Well, well, well. Saved. Let's show him to you. There we go, people. Up against that blue sky. A nice bream. Now listen, I'm on a cardboard, I'm not match fishing. I've still got my catfish rod out. I've still got my catfish rods out there. But as you can see, real nice fish on a piece of dog meat. And of course I can go home and have a shower. There he goes. Right in the sunshine, could you ask for more? That is not a catfish, but hey ho. That's pretty, I'm pretty sure that's what all those bubbles were early on. Well, it's quite nice, to be honest boys, to to change and just target so that I know I'm coming on a catfish, I wanted to catch a catfish, I still do, I've got a couple hours left. But you know, to find out what those bubbles were, what they're feeding were, have no bait, adapt, switch, change. Look, dog food, lamb, kidney and seaweed. Fishing four feet out, at least I've had a couple of fish. Well, wow, that's perked me up, go in. Well, I've missed a few bites on the float, not much. But I noticed the bubbles have stopped now, so I'm wondering if the sun's going down, the bream go off the feed because they know the catfish are going to nail them. And then I should have a catfish run, shouldn't I? That's a theory. It's interesting, I'm gradually getting through the meat. And talking of meat, I think it's time I actually got some meat myself to eat, so I think I'm going to have a bit of a cook up while it's quiet. Let's get the camping stove going. Getting down to last knockings, guys. I've got another bream hooked up here. Might just be able to bring this, bring this one to hand without falling in, Graham. So a small bream. I don't want a catfish grabbing him and me at the same time. Small bream, nice in the sunshine there. I think it's time to call it quits. 
Bit of one last cast, haven't I, guys? Well, look at all these bubbles coming up there. What's that all about? Really hasn't kicked off at all. You know, just three fish. It's a lot of fishing for three fish. But, very, very pleasant evening. Sun's going down. Got the entire lake to myself. I think I've got the entire fishery to myself. But not great fishing at all. That fish, that's why it's unhooking. It's really, really warm. I can see that's why they've got the blower going, but it might be the fact the blower is going over there that's shut the fish down for a while. They will get used to it. Of course they will. I think I've lost a shot off the float as well. It is. 25 past 8, I think we're down to the 10 minute warning. And that basically is me messing around with the float and the catfish world get very lucky. I've had two little tugs on that one, but they came to nothing. And lower this one out there again. Definitely lost a shot. Well, our float's not going off at all. No bubbles. I think. Time to call it quits, so a sort of a disaster, guys. But you've got to be in it to win it. And we didn't win any medals this time, but I did get three fish. I did just want to go fishing. It's my first trip out. Fresh water. I've been doing sea fishing. Beach fishing, good, pretty good. Boat fishing, yeah, good, good. First fresh water trip, a bit sketchy. That's the way it is. I don't know whether it's no anglers here, in other words, it's been thrashed and it is thrashed <laughs> and the fish will zipped up. I don't know if it's a blower being switched on today the first time it's moved them all around. I don't know. But I really had my chances pretty high of getting a catfish. I wouldn't have come out otherwise. Could have stayed working, but just nice. It'd be very, very pleasant to have enjoyed it. So guys, I'm going to move on. There's only one thing to do is pack up, go back, regroup and conjure up thoughts of another plan. I've got to go somewhere else, haven't I? It looks absolutely perfect, idyllic. I've had a really nice afternoon and evening. I've missed the thunderstorms. I've also missed the fish. They are not biting today. Well, boys, I'm back. What I have got is something I never normally get. You know, when I go beach fishing down Somerset, old Craig, the shore guy, he takes me miles all over rocks and boulders. Now, at my age, this is the way it should be. Listen, at the back of the tackle shop, well, I tackle shop, fishing office here at Finch Farm, there's a small pool. It's tiny. They are small pools. I've fished it before down the other end as well. I think I fished it with Mike once. So he says, nobody on this. He said, they're not fishing it because they've got some, you know, Basically, when you pull into the fishery, you've got a big lake over there, catfish lake down there. Because they sort of got the screen of buildings here, people forget. He said they just don't fish it. And uh, the bailiff's been fishing here. He's been doing okay. So what has he done? Wait for this. He's let me park right here. How close can you get to fishing? Right here. There's a swim. He came down because I struggled on those cats last, last night, yesterday evening. He said he's baited up just down there. He assures me I should get stuff action on the float and out in the middle. So let's get rigged up, boys, let's get going. And the other thing is, I started off well because I found, I found a float. And wait till I show you how I've adapted it. Saving money. I love it. As usual, the car is a bomb site. Look at all the blanket weed where I net my uh, own fish pond out with no fish in it. Clogs up, so I've got food, grub, tackle, Got some different bait here as well I want to try. Well, I don't want to try, I've used it for years. Man, look, for, for, I'm going to, look, I'm telling you. Six feet. <laughs> I'm, unloading my, I'm unloading my car six feet from where I'm fishing. I mean, at my age, this could be the swim of the future. Hopefully I'm going to need that. Sometimes these small pools are just real fun to fish. I'm using Avon rods and I bought, I probably only used one for float, but I've got my Avon so I've got one with a quiver tip. 
don't need all this carp rubbish. I don't need all that. Bait. Bran and uh, Bailey's number one ground bait. Some trout pellets. Let's chuck a few of those in. These are really, really oily pellets, these one. I'm going to fish one of these banded, I think. That's about where he's fit. fished before. He fishes in the evenings here. So I've got those. I've got here. Got it out of the freeze. Oh, God, he's going in the car now. It's going to stink. Some paste, which I've made up. Look. Try a bit of paste. I don't know what's in it. Pellet, bit of everything. So I'll just squeeze some bigger balls up in there. So much stuff I don't need. Look at it. Seat. All right guys, I've plumbed the depth. It looks like I put it there so you can see. I said it's a good four feet deep. I've got a little sort of stick float that I've got bottom end only. Just so the beginners know. Just like a waggler, but it's not a waggler float. It's a stick float. Don't even know who'd make it. It's Taylor's Tackle, if that means anything. It's about 30 years old, 35, might even be 40 years old. You'd be hard pushed to cast here. Let's check that drag. And of course, a nice piece of scaffold pole. I could just put the rod down. In fact, I could even get a backrest there. Let's get a, a few more of these boys in there. If we can't get something cooking here. I used to use paste bait a hell of a lot back in when I was like 50 years ago. Many people don't seem to use paste bait much now. I'm oh, just going to mix up a little bit of uh, ground bait here. Put some in the feeder. I'm going to make sure I don't mix it up too wet. You want it to come out the feeder, but if you bring the feeder back in and you've got ground bait still in it, then obviously you've mixed it out wrong. So just keep sort of damping it. And it's got quite a lot of brown in it, this one, so it will sort of fluff up. And I like to let it soak as well, just give it a bit of a soaking time. I'm going to chuck the other one right in the middle there. So here comes the duck. Here comes the enemy. No bites on the floaters yet. So there guys is a set up. Swim feeder for the ground bait, sliding up and down. Stopped about six, eight inches from the hook and a piece of paste bait there. I'm not using a bite indicator or buzzer. I'm just gonna be watching this up against the skyline. Just gonna drop it over there. I'm gonna say I thought I had a bang on the way down then. Doubtful, but not a nibble yet. Ah, oh, it's in the weed, that's why. Hello, is that float on the slide just going away slightly? Or is that just where the pace bait is sinking? I've thrown some bits of crust out there. It's a little small fish like this just knocking it. Hopefully the ducks don't see them. If I start the drift of the crust here, it goes down there. If I throw it out there, they seem to see it. But I fancy in that corner way up down here. Oh, here we go. Too late, he's seen him. He's seen him, here we go, that's a waste of bread. One, two, three. I've missed a bite on the float there on the paste, and I've come out just a little bit, a little bit deeper. There it is again, another little nibble on the float. I'm actually here, the road is just right behind me, guys, so you're gonna get some traffic noise. Guys, I'm all panicking, I've got a fish on here. Trying to fight it with the rub between my knees. Clipping a microphone on. What is this? I think it's a bream. Long time coming. It leapt out of the water. I can't pressure him too much. I've only got a small hook and a small link on. That looks like a quite nice fish. Oh, that's a nice one. That is a nice bream. That is a nice bream. That was... I'm surprised I've had no bubbles blowing at all. I'm 
I'm on a 14. Ah, yeah, yeah. He's trying to get in those snags. Let's just get one fish out of this, please. He's pulling well for a bream. I can't really... Oh, back, a bream that's backwinding me? Whatever's going on. Whatever is going on. It's a small hook, it's like a two pound hook link. My goodness me, I don't think I've had a fight off a bream like this. I'm on the Avon rod, so I can't bucket it right over. There he is, there he is, there he is. Maybe it's just going to take a bit of time to get the fish on the feed. He's got the line wrapped round him, he's coming backwards. Oh, he's come off the hook. Oh, yes. <laughs> What can I say that doesn't include some cussing and swear words? Oh, happy days, I'm so pleased. But you saw the fish anyway. Well, I think it's a fish baby mover. There's no bubbles or anything, but let's get a few more of these pellets. I know I hooked that last one on pace bait. They're gonna have to eat something. I don't have much stuff on the feed, so I'm just drawing. Just keep a little off them going up and up. And I've come away for a little bit there. And up here, I'll just show you, I'll show you. The ducks have gone up there and I've cast a feeder up here and the line spooks the ducks and keeps them away, hopefully. I've thrown up, oh, tell an eye. I did throw some bread up there, bits missing. And I just see a bit of a ripple there. Oh, there's a carp. Oh my God. Okay, okay, calm down, Graham. Okay, there's one bream here. Carp up there, now I'm torn. I think I'm gonna pull the feeder rod in, or the quiver tip rod and change it over, put a single hook on there and go stalking there. It's the other reason I, I, I cast up there is A, keep the ducks away, and B, I did see a carp up by those rushes. I'm just gonna go up here, boys. I've just seen, I can see a carp somewhere. Oh my God, there's a big carp down there. That is a big fish. I thought they were about four pounds. Wrong. Let me see what I can do. Bailiff said it's a good one's in here. I don't dispute him, but I haven't got my polos and glasses on. I'm gonna go left, I'm gonna go left. I'm gonna go left and hope there's a... Wow, there's a decent fish over the back. Oh, come on, you wish just fall off the hook. Here he comes, here he comes. Oh, was he spooky? Was he spooky? Oh my God, I thought I got him and missed him. That was a good carp. Is something gonna be salvaged here? I'm wondering. Should I get my polarizing glasses? Somebody tell me, Smith, tell me what I've got to do. I'm all in pieces. At long last, I've got a fish on, boys. I had to fish on. <laughs> no, he's still on. Thank goodness for that. I had to keep coming backwards and forwards in between the ducks. Look, it's a common. That's better than nothing. No more bream on that swim. I thought, you know, I've got to go walking around and see if I can't. I thought I'd better go walk. Oh, oh dear God, what a session. What a two day session I'm having. Unbelievable. Probably the worst two days fishing. I've had short of a total blank. Pinged out, I could probably, probably have netted that if I hadn't been messing around with the camera. Good Lord. Just excuse me while I use some profane language. I feel so much better for that. I've come right up the other end of this little pool, which you would think there's nothing in it. But this bread I've got is absolutely appalling. So I've got to try a piece of slow sinking flake here because I've just seen one about four or five pounds in there, but oh, there he is. I've no idea whether we're going to get lucky or not. They turned off it. Very, very spooky. I noticed that up the other end there. Very spooky. And that 
a slow sinking flake and he hasn't touched it. Come straight off. I've got the worst bread straight out the freezer. I could pop it. All I'm going to make with it really is ground bait. Worth a shot, worth a look. You see this little corner? There were one or two I saw, but I did see one just cruising just inside that rush edge there, just along the edge. Always worth a look. Didn't catch anything, but I could have done. Seems like the fish are right, right, right in those rushes. I can't get there. Just cannot get there with this quiver tip rod. Next one's possibly up the tree. Oh, hang on. There's a customer three, four, five inches away. And he's just gone underneath it. So that's not very nice. It's not very social, is it? Here he comes. No, turned off it. Crusted too hard, you see. It's, it's rubbish bread. They're trying to knock it off. Could all absolutely wait till I see that white of the uh, bread disappear. And now it's drifted right in the rushes. And I missed him. Happy days. What a session. I'd be glad to get back to work at this rate. Well, I can't miss that fish. There's a goldfish or something right under the bushes there. No, he's never going to take it, I can tell. I can see it. Oh, where are there some fish moving? Right, I'm absolutely gone up. I've gone up the rushes and hanging down so they can't possibly see the line. I'm hoping that they might actually come up, take the, take the crust down. It's right, right under the rushes there. Went through and just dropped down. It's almost perfect, really. Although perfect would be if a fish took it. At long last, people. Four carp lost, bream lost. I don't think I've had a day like it. It hasn't finished yet because I haven't got the fish. I've gone to a waggler float, floating crust, because I cannot, cannot get over how bad this bread is. When I'm playing this fish, I'll show you. It's my fault, I'd nearly... Going. I've nearly uh, used all of it. And I've gone smaller and smaller hooks. I'm hoping it doesn't wrap me around over there. I have seen some good fish in it with double figures. This one's not, but it's just, I'd settle for one fish. A bit like yesterday, three bream. Looks like a carp today, maybe. Very, very late in the day. But I've changed swims, changed lakes, changed tactics. I haven't got the fish yet. Oh, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Funny, funny weather, very funny weather. I mean, I've had carp coming up really, really close. This one's gonna go in the rushes, Graham. This one's gonna go in the rushes and you're gonna lose it. He's right in the rushes, he's only a little one. He, you see how he tried to get me right down in there? I'll set up for one, looks like a little common. The way he's going, he might be fouled, he might be fouled. Yeah, he's going back in for the... I think I'll get him. He's there, thank goodness for that. There we go, guys. Never was a small... Do you know this is the equivalent of a dogfish? If you were sea fishing. Bit of a large mat for a small fish. I guess fish about... Chunky, he's a fat one. Looks a bit like a carp. He's dinged. Look at that. So I've gone from really... Really, uh... Oh, hook fell out. Really bad luck to really good luck. Not good luck for the carp. There you go. Very, very fat one. Nice common. I suppose he's three and a half to four pounds. Let's put him back with a net. Oh, thank goodness for that. My goodness. Lucky there. Lucky, lucky, lucky. But I have seen fished about, I reckon about 14 pounds. 
that's about as late as I've left it to catch a fish. Good Lord. Five hours. Five hours to get one in the net. So I've actually had people, fish coming up around here, only small ones, look, that's fun fishing. So I'm fishing my float, I shallowed it right up, six pounds straight through, about a size 14 hook, tiny piece of crust. But the crust is like concrete. It does not go pappy like this when you dunk it. So they're knocking it straight off the hook. So it's the bread, I'm blaming the bread and the coots for um, me missing all these fish. But normally I'm just free lining and I either feel or see the fish close their mouth on the bait. But it's missing them, missing them, missing them. And now I'm using a little waggler float. So I just ignore anything that swirls around the bread and I only strike when I see the float move. The other lake was a no-go that's about 18 ducks on there. Now I've got the most appalling bread. It's all open flake granary stuff, which was a bad, bad mistake. The cheapo sliced bread's better, but just a little tip. You, you, sometimes it's in windy conditions, you can't throw it out very far, especially if it's what I call light and fluffy. If you just cut it up to the size you want, put it in the land in it, if you, it saves you falling in the water there, dip it in the water just for like, look, just there. What's that? Five seconds? Tip it out. Now that's got water in it, so watch how far you can throw it out a lot farther. And here comes the coot, obviously. And that gets it out a lot farther. Just a little tip for throwing dry bread out, which is difficult, and if it's soaked up, it goes a lot farther. Wow, boys. It's about the toughest two days fishing I think I've had. Not even two days. It's just, I mean, I must have missed five, six carp on that other lake. I've got that one small one. But there you go, I didn't, uh, didn't do any good in this hot swim here. Just down here, didn't see any bubbles, didn't see anything. Who knows, it's just the way it is, so I'm going to finish off with a slap up meal before I pack up and go home. I might not even fish now, which says something, but uh, just have a little cook up. Beans, no spaghetti bolognese. So sorted out with the uh, microphone, could go anywhere this fish. He's going down the race swim down there. Just want to get the mic clipped up. So I have finally, finally picked up in this swim. I just packed up, everything else is in the car. There you see, so we haven't got the fish yet, but we're gonna see if we can't luck out with just one fish. I've had that one in the other lake. <clears throat> and this was, yes, yeah, a nice one, yeah, yeah. This is a nice one, let's see if we get lucky with him. Put everything away. It's like a common carp. Yeah, I've got that small hook on. Yes. Tiny, tiny, tiny piece of uh, crust. Way smaller than I would, than I would normally be using. Oh, I'll just save that, save that, get it. He's in, thank goodness for that, boys. And you can see, that's, this is what I'm down to fishing with. <laughs> Out of a whole loaf of bread, that's all I've got left. <laughs> Let's get this guy back in. And we have one more cast. In he goes. Gratefully received. That probably is going to be it, but of course I have to have another cast. So, waggler float at the top, tiny little piece of, about size 12 hook, 
and a real, real small piece of crust there. They are so picky. This probably will be the end of it. I've actually got down in the baited swim, just down here I've got a piece of paste bait. Nothing on that, you're just waiting for the tip to fold over. I'm on hands free. <laughs> Hands free, blimey. I was on fish free today. Well, that was the hardest two afternoon slash evening sessions. I packed up early, up past eight. I think that's two of the hardest sessions I've had because it was frustrating. I'm as exhausted as if I, I've been slain fish 100 pounds of bream or something like that because the stress of trying to find out why they just won't feed. But, got that. Well, two carp off the top in the end, so I salvaged something. Not great, but listen, there's no dispute in there's plenty of fish in there. It just lets you guys know, I don't catch fish all the time. Of course I don't, I don't, you know? But I find it frustrating when I figure in that's about the best conditions I could have got for catfish, that thundery, oppressive, humid, muggy weather. I'm just amazed. I'm really absolutely quite amazed. One guy had one about five pounds today. That, and there's, I think, three of them fishing. So that's six rods, you know, for one five, six pound or something like that. It's, it's very, very peculiar. Anyway, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hit that subscribe button. And listen, make sure you hit the notification bell. If you don't, pause, pause while he goes round roundabout. If you don't, you're never going to know when the films go up, are you? There we go. I'm going home. I'm going to have some cornflakes when I get home. The time I get home, it will be dark. And we'll see you in the next show. Oh, yeah, don't forget Mike's TA Outdoors. Got good numbers on that. There's a few fishing ones on there as well if you want to search through the playlist. And don't forget to look through our playlist as well. And why not click that link on the top of any film that you think might suit somebody else, a beginner, a novice, even somebody who wants to pass a bit of time. Just share it, just send it to them. We'll see you next time, and I do hope I can get that rub bent a little bit easier. See you around guys.